Hey guys, welcome to the next video in the Max Script video series. And today we are going to talk about loops, specifically for loop. So imagine you have a playlist of songs in which you have about uh, 10 songs and you put it on loop, which means you start with the first song and you reach the 10th song and the application loops it back by playing the first song again. So in 3D Studio Max, if you would like to repeat a line of code, you can simply write a for loop and it's as simple as a sentence like for a variable x, let's say, in 1 to 10, do something. So I'm just going to write down. So whenever you say do evaluate some line of code, you wrap it up inside the round brackets. Right now, I'm just going to say print hello. So this is just an example where you can basically see that I am printing out hello about 10 times. And uh, this is something that you might not do. So the next thing that we'll check is we'll take the value of x as it iterates through 1 to 10. And notice that I'm using the word iterate, which means x goes from 1 to 10 when we are using a for loop. Now, once I evaluate this code, you see that x is a variable that basically iterates from 1 to 10, which means it changes its value from 1 to 10. And once x has reached 10, the for loop exits. A basic example that you might want to see is when you want to iterate in the selection. So you say that, hey Max, I have a couple of selected objects and for each object, you print out its name. So in, in simple English, I would just say that for x in current selection, do something. So for x in selection, do print x. And instead of x, I'm just going to say print x dot name because if I print x, it'll print the selection. Before I run this code, I'll just make a random selection and I'm just going to evaluate this code. And if you see, we have obj, 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 f spot four, and then some obj. So we have a couple of objects that have been named as obj. That is how it prints the code, uh, prints the value. A very simple example where you would use this kind of for loop is when you have, uh, let's say, these four lights. And these are not instances because some are omni and some are spotlights. And you want to change the multiplier of these four lights. So what you can do is you can say that, hey, Max, for x in selection, do change the multiplier of these lights to, let's say, 150. So I'm going to say for x in selection, do x dot multiplier equals 150. And I'm going to evaluate this code. So it prints out OK in the listener. So if I check the object one by one, the multiplier is now 150. Whereas the others have a multiplier of about 100. Now, one thing that we need to remember is that when I select these lights, even if the light type is different, the base class is the same, which means it's of type light, and hence it'll have a multiplier. If I make a selection of these two lights in a teapot, and I run this code, it'll give me an error because there is no multiplier property in the teapot. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to write one more code in which I'm going to select a couple of teapots, and I'm going to change the segments to let's say 16. So if I say for X in selection, do X dot segments equals 16. I'll just run this code and you see that the segments bumped up to 16. Now, if I were to have a few lights and some teapots in the selection and I run the code, it's going to give me an error because the lights do not have segments. So please do keep in mind that whenever you're running such kind of loops, the objects that you are trying to change the value or properties of, they must contain those properties. Like if you remember, uh, these objects will have definitely one property in common, which is the name. So I can say name equal objects. And this is because these all are derived from the node class. And when I run this, you will see that I have nine entities and the name has been changed to objects. So another simple 
you know implementation of a for loop is when you want to uh, change the name of each and every object and serial in a in a serial order. So let's say we select this Omni one, two, three, four, and five. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to add one more variable, which is say counter, and I'm going to assign it a value of zero. So every time I iterate in the selection, I will make sure that the counter increments once, and I'm going to append the counter to its name. So for X in selection, do, now here I'm going to write multiple lines of code. Earlier we were executing one single line of code, but now I'm going to execute two lines of code. So the first line is counter plus equals one, which will basically increment the counter once. So the next line is change the name of the current object in the selection to object, I'll put it as object underscore plus counter as string. It's always a good habit to encapsulate some uh, expressions like these. And now if I evaluate only these lines of code, I go to tools, evaluate line or selection, and it prints. So it prints zero because the first line is zero. And now if I go to this light, it is object one, object two, object three, object four, and object five. Okay, so let's take another example where I have these teapots and I select them one by one. And I want to rename the teapots. So let's say the counter is zero and I'm going to rename it as teapot. And I'm going to run or evaluate these lines of code. So I go to tools, evaluate line or selection. And the first, this is the first teapot, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Okay, so let's take a look at another example where you can just simply change the position of, uh, let's say, a couple of objects. So I'm just going to say for X in selection, do X dot position. So we can write X dot POS, pose. And because this is Z up, I'm just going to give it a Z value of 10. And I'm going to run this. So we just need to run this piece of code, evaluate line of selection, and there you go. If I make it to something like 20, and again, we evaluate this line of code. So these are some very basic examples so that we can get ourselves familiarized with loops and how do we iterate through some list or an array or a selection. So that is it for the video guys and thank you so much for watching.